Hi there, I'm Bonnie, Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. I have a lot of things on my table that I wanna share with you. They're not all the way finished, but I wanted to get this video up. Today is the Saturday before Easter and I have some Easter things that I wanna share with you. And um, even though it's not all the way done, I was feeling the pressure to try to rush and get things finished this morning. And I thought, no, we'll just show you, this is the real thing. And I love sharing with you as if you were just with me in my sewing room. And that's how I've had so many people respond that that's how they feel that they're just hanging out with me in my sewing room. So we're having no perfection um, and just sharing, sharing things in process and just sharing about the things that I love. And I have had so many people joining into my stitching family that hadn't seen me before when I did my floss tubes a couple years ago. And, um, and that's exciting. I love being able to inspire people and share with people in, in a lot of the different things in my life. And I've had a lot of questions and I kind of want to address them and share with you some of the things as I'm, as I'm doing this video. So um, for those of you who may just see my channel right now for the first time, I had done videos several years ago when we were living in California. And now we have taken a very long transition to get to Colorado. It's been a long and bumpy and windy road. And um, we're here now. And there's some things that I'm noticing about getting back into floss tube that, um, that we'll talk about. So let's just share. I've got uh, an eyelash bug in me. The exciting thing that I wanted to share with you about because we have Easter Sunday tomorrow, and even though as a Christ follower, Easter is Resurrection Day, and it's not about the bunnies, it's not about the eggs, it's not about the egg salad, it's about Christ giving his life as a sacrifice for me, and three days later being raised from the dead because Jesus is God. So that's what Easter is for me. But I also enjoy the bunnies and the eggs and the eggs. I love egg salad um, and the egg salad. So it's just a mix of everything um, that I want to share with you here. So an exciting thing in my last video. So this is 49 in my video 48. I shared it was a long one. It was an hour and 20 minutes. And I shared a big collection of the stitching boxes that I'm enjoying doing. And so many of you are enjoying jumping in and making stitching boxes out of all types of things. And I love it. So I was sharing that um, I wanted to make a stitching box for Easter. And I had just purchased um, a pattern, a, a I'm, not, I'm getting distracted watching things going on outside my window, so I'm going to stay focused. Um, I I had just purchased a pattern from Rhonda at Asbury's Echoes, and then I was thinking I want to make an Easter box because I had seen this color that I had, and um, and I was so excited, but I didn't fully, fully complete it. But I'm going to share with you what it is so far because tomorrow's Easter and this would be so fun. For many of you that stitch in hand, you can whip things up really fast. I am a slow stitcher and I stitch in hoop and I'm usually watching something as I do it so it goes slower. But this is it. So this is Hippity Hoppity, the pattern on Etsy by Asbury Echoes. And the exciting thing was I was sharing and I hope that you guys maybe that this this could be the first time you've seen my video. And if you go back to the last one, I share all the boxes, I think all the boxes that I've made. And I had a lot of questions. So I'm going to address those questions today. But 
This is super fun and I love Prim and so many of you that are joining in my stitching family or were, were with me when I was doing my videos a couple years ago, love the Prim too. So this one, um, I take a pattern. So this is the complete pattern and this is done 36 count Zweigart coffee dyed after stitching and um, called for colors. So I'm trying to remember to do all that stuff when I get so excited about showing things. And um, so I just got some Purple Paper Mountain um, chenille. So that's fun, but I'm gonna open this up. Now remember, this is in progress. And part of the reason I just wanted to do this now was because I gave up a little adventure. My husband went to um, Ure, a darling little local town that I love to go to with him. But he wanted to go and go for a walk and be outside. And I'm like, I have to finish a project so I can share with my stitching friends before Easter. And then I was feeling rushed and I thought, you're my stitching friends. You're just hanging out with me. So you don't have to see the complete project. You can have that inspiration and the fun of seeing this. And I will finish this this afternoon. So these are the boxes from Hobby Lobby. And I'll explain about how I get that prim color in a minute. But I want to share with you what I've got so far. So this is how I do them. Um, I just take that original pattern and then I see is there components on there that would make the pin cushion. So that's part of the pin cushion. See the, I'm trying not to dump everything. The, this part, woo, let's see. This part of it made the pin cushion and then I love to do a needle book. And so we have this rabbit but I wanted to do it a different color. My my brother, my sister, and I had rabbits when we were young and we all had different colors. So here's my rabbit. Where'd you go? Hippity hoppity, there you are. There's my little rabbit. So um, I did it a darker brown and I'll put, I did the front, all the called for colors. This I think was 839, just a little bit darker. But sometimes I will do wool and I may play around. I'm playing around with different things. So I may do wool on the inside. And these are the playing card boxes from that I get from Hobby Lobby. But I was playing with different fabrics. And I've had so many questions about my fabric collections. And, and that's where I may not show you half of what's on my table because I just want to chill and share with you the things that people have been asking because that's what you're really interested in. Now, I like to order from fatquartershop.com. Um, now that I'm here in Montrose, Colorado, there is actually a local quilt shop. But as with many quilt shops now, they're going with what sells, which are the brights. Not me, I'm not, I'm not bright. <laughs> <laughs> I'm muddy and that's exactly what I feel like today. I like the dark colors. So I like to order from Fat Quarter Shop or different shops um, that I can just find things that I like. And um, Fat Quarter Shop has a large collection of, of brights too, but the darker, muddier colors that I love. So when I made an order, I got a free charm pack of Lori Holt. It was, it was um, a recent line, I'm sure. But most of Lori's colors are more vintage and I'm darker. So I was going to save most of those colors and make project bags and do them as a gift or something. But as I was looking through some of the colors, there were some that I thought would be perfect for my little Easter box. And look at this one. It is, um, it's got little, little chickies on it. And then this color looks cute. And then on the inside, so I'm try if I could say three things at once, I think that's how my brain would function better. They wouldn't be intelligent, but I could say everything I'm thinking. Let me show you what's inside of this. Now, inside of this little needle book will be, I think, so far, these colors. So these are the colors. Oh, I even pinned them the other night. It was like midnight, and I thought, oh, I've got to just go to sleep. So this will be a needle book. These, this will be the little pocket. And this is again from that little Lori Holt charm pack. I have an avalanche going to start. So this will be a little pocket that I'll put my little nifty things in. And this will be the inside and this will be the front. Just like, I think I just set something on top of it. I have other, <laughs> I have a slide. Okay, this is what it's going to be. 
and um, these are all the colors that I think will go very well with it. So then when I do the inside of the needle book, I like to do a little wool thing here that I can stick my needles in. And I was thinking, oh, what do I want to do? And I got all these things out. And that's where I thought, if I finish this, it's going to be midnight and then I'll be uploading. And I didn't want to do that. So this is, um, this is my Easter box. Now, just to try to answer questions that I remember that I've had and just share with you in a relaxed way, this is just how we're going to do it. So I have, um, I used to be a woodworker and I had gallons and gallons of paint and I loved um, ceram coat. I think it was um, a ceram coat acrylic paint. I loved that. I don't know if they're in business anymore, but this is what I found at Hobby Lobby. So this is the color that this was originally. So you can see how if you're into brights, just do it without doing the waxing that I'll share about in a minute. So this is golden straw. So um, what I wanna share about is my mix of wanting to minimalize, declutter, not have more than I need, when obviously I have this room of way more than I need. But as I mine new things to go with what I wanna do, I'm trying not to have, I have a box that I want all of my supplies in. And that means um, the paint as well. So here's a trick that I learned when I was a woodworker and I would have certain paints and I had a lot of them, but I had maybe five basic paints. And then I could just, I could mix white or cream with it to lighten it up. I could mix black or brown or red with it to darken things up. So that's what I was thinking. I love to shop. I love to buy, but that's not what I want anymore. So if you take a bright color, mix touch of black in it, who knows? It would be fun. You're just going to, you just play with and see what comes up. So that's the yellow. And then um, Brie Wax. So it's B-R-I-W-A-X. So it's Tudor Brown and it's a stain wax. And I share all about this on my last video. But because some people may not want to watch that last video, that's what this is. It's just a combination of the wax and the paint. And then I sanded it in between and I explained that on the last one. But um, as I was watching one of um, Rhonda's um, floss tube videos, Asbury Echoes, she was talking about how with coffee and tea dye, it's not like the RIT dye that is color fast. This is not colors fast. So as I was creating this late at night, I was cleaning up some glue and I had a paper towel with water on it. Well, as I had this open and I was creating, little did I know that paper towel with water was right here. And I thought, I, I wanted to get this video up days ago. And I thought, oh, I went to flip it and I saw this big, huge splotch here. And I was, I was mad. I was like, no, I want to get this done. And I was ready just to rip the thing off. And I thought, calm down, girl, we can fix this. So I went in and I had a spray bottle with water. So I sprayed it more, even though it was already attached on here with the chenille, I sprayed it with water so I could saturate it a little bit more. And then I got a paper towel, not a paper towel, I had a, a washcloth and I pressed and pressed it into the washcloth to kind of pull out that excess water. And I thought, what are we gonna get? I was going to iron it. I can't remember if I did or not because ironing it would have dried it and made it stick more. But you can see it's lighter there, but it's fine. That's fine. So I didn't have to redo it again. But those are the pros and cons of, um, of doing the coffee dye, which I love. And I was even playing around with it. I've got so many things to show you on my table. So I was just testing the strength of my coffee. And then obviously this was on my table as I was trying to clean this box up and that's what happened it gets splotches but it can make it even more prim but it wasn't the splotch that I had was not one that I would have wanted to keep but I saved it so the chenille I got I'm trying not to buy lots of stuff that's my big thing right now 
it's try not to buy lots of stuff use what you have but i was finding i just didn't have the trims i do like the chenille i just didn't have enough to do the projects that i want to do and so i made an etsy order on purple paper mountain and i have seen so many of my stitching friends share about that so this one so just say you want to do this exact one for those prim lovers this is what it is um vintage golden brown it's three yards it's called vintage chenille trim i didn't see a whole lot of different ones just like this on there but this is a great color so it can go brown it, it can it can mix with a lot of things so it's a great neutral color very small trim but it cleans up the edges now enough of that i had somebody ask too how do i attach this to the top now I had to go, I we are still unpacking boxes from our move and I have a bunch of smaller bottles of Aileen's and I couldn't find them. And so my husband was, he, he grocery shops for me, which is great. So I had him pick up, um, I, I gave him the job of, of finding the tacky glue for me and he, he did. So I don't like to buy big bottles because for me, I don't use them enough. This is the biggest bottle that I would want because it could end up drying out. So I end up, I lace it and Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher shows how you can lace things. She is the go-to girl for tutorials, I'm not. But what I do is I do this around the edge of the back and then I go back and forth and then I usually just eyeball it. I will eyeball it, press it down and then I will press, press, press and it, it takes about five or 10 minutes that you make sure that it's all pressed down the way you want to go. The excess glue that comes out, that's where I was using the wet paper towel. So you get it cleaned up. But the interesting thing was this is this Brie wax is amazing because you can get the different colors, but it creates a wax coat. So as I was messing with the water and I know I eventually did the iron because I looked in this box then had this cloudy whiteness and I thought, oh, I'm just making it worse. And then I got that old washcloth and I buffed it and because it had the wax coating on it, it came right back to the nice shine. So there you go. That's that's my box. And since we are talking about um, Rhonda's designs on Asbury's Echoes Etsy site, I had shared this last time and how special this became to me because, um, well, just go back and you can see that story. But at the time, I was not going to be doing floss tube, wasn't even thinking about floss tube, really wasn't even watching floss tube. I had just found this and I thought I didn't even write the colors down this morning. I, I have lots of notebooks. I love these notebooks. You can get them a couple dollars, five, six dollars on Amazon. Lots of different um, notebooks like this. And I love this. And this one's almost full. This was from my time at the cabin. And I found... I had the colors. I had actually written down the colors because this was next to my stitching spot. So these are the colors um, for what I did in here. And if I, if I think of it, I will update my last video or this video with these colors because I did not do the coffee dyeing because I didn't have all the supplies with me, but I loved how it turned out. But this one, um, this and the gobbler um, the, with a waddle, the waddle our family heritage is the waddle anyway i found the colors and i was really excited about it but this one is is a necessities thread that i bought many many years ago and i don't even know if they're out now but basically it's an orangey rust that went almost to black and so you can play around with that so if you're primitive you like that kind of thing but you can play with the threads that you've got all right moving on one more um, one more fun thing because I love primitive. Sometimes it's hard to find primitive patterns and Rhonda's got them. So another new one. And I watched her video right after I had already bought this little pattern. So she has lots of different words and this one was primitive needleworker. And it was just a scrap linen, but I'm going to put this on a project bag. So I didn't want it small. Usually I love 36, but this is an, um, maybe it's a 28. I can, I can actually see, I can actually see the, the linen squares. So, um, but here's the interesting thing. I was sharing how I get 
cut up in wanting the exact thread to turn out exactly like the pattern that I'm looking at and I get way hung up and I was sharing last time how I just give myself permission to try it not get hung up at, on it and if I don't like it I can just stitch it again so um I was just playing around with different threads but I have this one is called faded brown and it's Valdani six strand floss now you can still buy Valdani six strand embroidery floss but I had repurchased an olive that's where this chair thing we have how we have to see I keep telling myself just to relax and it's okay that I'm far away from you so this is the color but I really am interested now for a long time I was like and eh, I don't like the Valdani um, because the 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 variegation was just a little bit unusual I had tried to rebuy an olive green. The older one was much darker. The newer one is much lighter and I don't care for it as much. So this one, even if you were to buy this exact one, I don't know that it would be the same exact color. But, and it's also a little bit more matte, which is great for prim stitchers. Um, it's a little bit more matte than some, uh, than weeks and um, even more than gentle arts and um, classic color work. So it's just a little bit different, but I'm gonna be doing a few more. Um, and so I was just trying to pull out some darker, darker linens that I have. This is one that I coffee dyed myself. And so I'm gonna be playing around because um, I have some purposes for some more of these, but this is fun. She has lots of different words. She even has some that are like, um, button jars and kind of stuff. So I'm thinking, oh, I have, and one that says old basket. So I've got all this stuff up there. But um, for now, I'm just, I'm trying to slow down because, oh, she has, she did a video and had, um, I love bees. And I will share with you next video. I think I want to share with you about my Robins. Then I'll share with you about my bee collection of things. But she had one and she picked up the um the pillow that she had made with the bee and i'm like oh where'd you get that where'd you get that she designed it so i bought it right away i'm really sometimes i just can't stop but i'm really really working at not doing what i call the hunter gatherer which is buying and buying and buying and so um i am i feel like completely out of control in a lot of areas so April for me is going to be a no spend April, simply doing the gazillion things that I already have and um, and having fun and being content with them. Now, I wanted to share with you some of the Easter things. So I had shared about this last time. This is um, this is a pillow, pillow tuck. OK, so this one is I did that. Um, Primitive Stitching by Shelly On. And I was talking about, this is the great thing about you guys being here with me in my stitching room because in your comments, you share your ideas. And I love it. Now, I was lamenting about all the polyfill that I had moved and stored and brought here. So it's like, I am going to use that. But how much I love just the cotton filling in the top of the vitamin jars. So I had a lot of comments amazing that I had never even heard of this before, but I never even asked you guys the question. And so a lot of people were saying that they iron the back of the polyfill to kind of flatten it. And they, some use steam, some don't, some use a mix of walnut shells. And I thought, well, I'd already stuffed this, so I would use steam. Now, how much steam you use, that's what you learn when you do this, because I was just trying it because I could restitch this if I had ruined it but I kind of plastic coated it and I had to open the window. It was cold outside. I had to open the window because I, I don't like toxins. The world is toxic and the polyester I'm sure is incredibly toxic. So I was, I kind of overdid it, but it got nice and flat and I really like that. But that was, that's one of my Easter things. And I appreciate that so much. And I'm going to be asking more questions from you guys as I'm doing things because um, that was a great learning experience. Um, so that guy was there. Now here's, it's just funny because this guy I did years ago and he's nice and flat. And I'm assuming I use that polyfill, but I did this a long time ago. So this one certainly color changes, but this is Br'er Rabbit. So this is, everybody has done this, I think, but this is Br'er Rabbit. I wanted to do the color changes and I, I found I found that I oh that's not the chart. I found that I had written them on the back. So I'll write the color changes. 
but um, if I was to do this again, this always bugs me that this does not have the space. Did I make that mistake or is that part of the pattern? I don't know, but I want a space there. So there you go. But this is a fun one, nice and flat, and I really like the flap. So there you go. We've got that. We've got that. Now, um, I there was something else. It's like, oh, I want to get all my Easter stuff done before Easter. Didn't get it all done. Here is something, but I, I wanted to wait and do all the coffee dyeing at one time. So this is Easter, and this is Country Rustic Primitives. Um, on Etsy, I have a couple of the favorite prim places that I shop from, and one of them is Country Rustic Primitives, Primitive Stitching by Shelly on Asbury Echoes now, but that I just found as a suggestion because I wasn't watching floss tubers at the time to know about Rhonda. Um, and then there's a couple other ones. So of course, Lori Brecklin, Not Forgotten Farm, Daisy K, Christy Daisy K's Primitives has patterns too. And I showed a box that I had done last time. Here's what I'm gonna ask you guys. And I'm finding some new ones. Um, Teresa's Primitive Treasures, something like that. So you prim lovers out there, and I like shopping Etsy. Um, so what are some of your favorite prim designers? So that's, that's the question for this week. And then I was asking on the last video, cause I was just sharing about how I get so bogged down maybe, but just slowed down with, um, choosing the exact right color for the backing of the pillow. And many of you shared the same thing that you take a long time doing it. You'll lay something down and then look at it, walk by and see, is that something that you like? And we were talking about, and someone asked me about what my favorite designers or fabric collections are. I've got some sitting right here. But as I was looking through, this basket has some of my scraps. So before, before I sort them, I'll just throw the scraps up there. That's one of my ways of keeping my area neat. All the scraps go up there. But as I was looking through it, probably to find a backing for this, I found just a little scrap and I thought, oh, cause I kind of wanted it blue. Cause we have blue countertops in the kitchen. Um, I'm not a blue person, but now I'm learning to appreciate blue. Anyway, I thought, oh, that was so cool. I know I have a bigger piece in my stash. Okay, so I found the bigger piece and I was like, that is the perfect one. That's the look I want. And then I came across this one. I thought, oh, that's the look I want too. So many of you, and I love, when you guys share with me your ideas and your thoughts. Many of you do the same thing. So we'll see when I actually make that, how it gets finished. So a couple of the other things. My last video, um, if you go to about the hour point at one hour, if you don't wanna watch the whole thing, just scroll through at the hour. If you wanna learn more about this one and this one, you can go check that out but because that was into it an hour, and I can see on the analytics how long people generally, the average of how long people watch the video and um, which ones are, you know, whatever. No pressure. I don't, I, I don't, doesn't matter. But if you would hear about that one, go to the hour on the last video. Now, some other fun things that I wanted to share before I answer questions, because I have this stuff here. I had shared about this basket and you can see the cool little balls there. I had this out to share in the last video and I don't think I did, but this is wool roving and I have so many hobbies that um, that's why I need to slow down my purchasing, slow down my collecting so I can use what I've got. So I had shared in in my my, my welcome back video, welcome back to me, um, a couple of videos ago about what the stuff is here. So this is wool roving and I do it for needle felting. Now, I didn't have anything that I could grab at the time of needle felting, but this is one of my other hobbies that I do. So this is a pin cushion that I have made and um, this is needle felted. So um, fun, fun stuff. I have so many supplies, so many things I want to do that, um, that's why I just need this morning. I really was feeling chaotic and 
Um, that's why I was talking to my husband. I've got a project I want to do, but I know you want to go for a little adventure. So you go, I'll stay. But I, I was having just a time of thinking, what's going on in my head? We have a lot of things transitioning full time to another state. And my husband's going through um, processes <laughs> on getting his pension and, and all this kind of stuff. It takes a lot of I'm and I'm the I'm the bookkeeper secretary. So I'm I'm doing all that. So that's one thing. But I've got so many hobbies. And after my things were in storage for a year or two, depending on if I opened the box or not, I I just wanted to get into everything at once. So I'm realizing I've been saturated with cross stitch because I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm sharing with you all my things and I'm wanting to finish things up. And then I keep finding more things that I had finished. And then I was thinking, I went to my quilt guild. I went to a new quilt guild. Um, well, it's my third meeting. And then I want to do all my quilt things. And then I want to do this and this and this. And I thought, okay, let's do a no spend April. Just use the things, finish the things. And I have so many quilts that I want to work on. So you'll see me pop in and out. And I keep promising all my quilters that I'm going to do a quilt video. So that's where I was just like, slow down and let's just do this. So, um, so we'll see. We'll see what the next video is. But that's where I just was realizing I just need to relax. And then as I was preparing, getting, getting ready for things to share with you, um, I, I came across another video. Um, I follow Joshua Becker and he had a video and what was it called? And it really got me thinking because this is, this was my thought process of my brain is like whirling and I can't think to finish things. So what do I do? Um, and that's where I just sit and cross stitch because you just sit and look at a chart and it tells you what to do if you're not messed around with the colors and I was doing that. But this, this video was called The Joy of Not Wanting Things. He just posted it yesterday. And I thought, that doesn't sound, sound like fun. <laughs> Whoops, that's one less thing I could share with you. Um, that doesn't sound like fun. I want so many things, but I really, that's what really helped me as I was purging and cleaning and setting up our household here, not having so many things and putting the things in their space and all that kind of stuff. But, um, that, so that's where I thought no spending. Cause I had already ordered some things and I thought, okay, let's stop and let's just do things. So, so that's what I want to do. I want to get out all these wonderful things that I've got, finish them up, get my UFOs out. I'm like having a hot flash. Um, I had turned the heater up really, it's cold. I had turned the heater up so I wouldn't have the heater running. And if you hear noises, that's a vent right there and it's got a loose top thing. And so every time it's windy, which it is, it makes noise. Okay, here we go. Questions on some of the colors. So the box, the boxes, please go to my last video. I share all about it, but I had questions about what the colors were. So this one, khaki tan, and you can see that color, but this is what it became with the Brie, B-R-I-W-A-X, Brie Wax. That was one of the colors. And, and again, I think I have a dozen colors and that's, that's all I have at the moment. And if I really need one, I'll get it if I can't mix it. Okay, so this color, um, lush green became this. This is the color. So with that wax, if you like the prim, get that Tudor Brown or another dark wax. And if you just want the wax, they probably have wax that's not a stain. I don't know, or a much lighter stain. But to me, the darker, the better. Okay, so this one, Raw Umber, that's the color. And this is the box. So it definitely darkens it up. And you can manipulate between putting more wax on and rubbing maybe even doing a second layer, you can manipulate and then you can also wipe off quite a bit of it. But somebody was mentioning too, because I had said it smells. So usually I would be doing it outside. I had a, a great covered patio and I could do it outside. So the fumes, like I said, I don't like the toxins as much as I can. The fumes could go, but I was doing it in the garage because it was really cold, but I opened the garage door just so I could get 
um, get some fresh air and I use colorist gloves. So I use um, the like latex gloves kind of a thing, the disposable ones. And, um, and I probably should wear a mask and I didn't, but, oh, but this, uh, somebody was saying, um, thanks for the heads up on the smell, but the smell goes away after about 24 hours. I let the thing sit out, out in the garage. I let the thing sit and now they don't. So this, no smell, no smell at all. Um, so that's that. Now this one, again, on the last video shared all about these, these very fun boxes. Look at that. So definitely, definitely can change things, but really don't, don't worry about getting these exact colors. I just want to share with you what you can do with the wax and the color and the sandpaper and all. So, <laughs> um, a big stack of things to share with you. So I also wanted to, to show you, I've not made, I've not done a box in black yet. I want to, cause I thought, what would that look like? Cause I could sand it off quite a bit and then put the wax on and then you can rub more wax on, less wax on, wax off. What is that old, old commercial? But you can darken up things with the black, just a little drop of what I used to do. I used to have, um, you can still get it, just a plastic round. It's like, I use a rummikin now, just a cooking kind of a thing, but you can just get a bowl. You don't have to buy anything. Get a bowl, squish in some paint, which if you get it on your clothes, it's gonna stain. If you get it on the counter and don't get it cleaned off, you know, you clean it up, be, be adults here. Um, but get a bigger blob, maybe a quarter of the color that you wanna work with and just do a dot, a little tiny dot or dip it in a toothpick and stir it around and see, play with the colors, have fun. Don't buy so much. You don't need it all. You don't need it all. Remind me of that as I'm pushing by on some of the things. Now, my favorite color is this. So this was um, new on my last video. This is favorite. I found I had two, so I had bought it again. They were on sale, so I had bought it again without realizing it. But this is my favorite color. So I love this red. I love the red. Sometimes you can't get this stupid label off the bottom all the way. But I love the red. And um, this is still in progress because I still have more things that I want to do. So thinking of this red, um, uh, let's see. Okay, so I have enough I don't want you guys to have to keep seeing the top of my head. So there we go. Okay. So O oh, Tannen Bomb. Last year um, I saw Christy, Daisy Case Primitives, and Shanda Stitching in Idaho were doing this. And I bought it and I started stitching it. I'm I'm really, I really stink at follow through. So I started stitching it. They had a plan, they worked their plan, they got it finished. Um, but I didn't work my plan. But I did get some done. So this is my progress. And I was stitching it a year ago at this time because I remember we were, um, you know, the blizzard of this, the California. We had been living in our cabin, primitive cabin, backwoods. Um, and we had to leave it for a month and a half because there was too much snow. So this was when we were like back and forth, California, Colorado. It was, it was not fun in some ways and in other ways it was fun. So I remember I couldn't sleep at night. I was at my mother-in-law's and um, I just got up and I was stitching away. So I remember that as I'm stitching, I still need to finish that. And here's my Santa. I was stitching on this when I was um, quite sick this last summer. Um, and I was listening to a book on tape and I had no energy the first week. Um, and so I just laid and looked outside. And then the second week I was getting a little bit more energy and so I was stitching. I was listening to a Christmas book on tape and stitching that. So those are the only ones that I've got done so far. But um, I I want to get that done. But instead of doing this box, which I will share with you in a second where you can get that box, um, I got the box. So I got the box and I was debating, do I want to spend the money to get the box or can I do something else? Because you could really just do pillows. You could, you could do lots of things without having to buy a box, but I bought the box, but I thought I want it dark um, because I love the dark red. I am gonna do this box like that. Won't that just pop? 
it will make Santa pop. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and we'll see if I get that done by next time. Cause what I can do is I had made a mistake and I was, I was sick and um, I wasn't thinking and somehow I started Santa this way and the other project was right here. And after, you know, this took me hours to do because I'm a slow stitcher. And I thought, oh, what am I thinking? Um, so anyway, I had to restart it. So it was already cut. So I can cut and do them as I want. I've got a lot of Wren and so that's what I can do. Now, um, okay, so as as we were displaced, we had sold our home. Um, we were in the process, ah, we had bought this house here, but we let the the people who, because we bought it off market, bingo, that, that was amazing. We let the people stay here rent free um, until their house was finished. And it, it ended up being too much, two months longer. So it was really funny how we, we owned a home, but we couldn't be in it. Yeah, and we couldn't be in our cabin because of the snow. So it was just, it was just kind of a, a t it was a time. It was, it was a time. The, the wait was worth it. The wait was worth it because we were so happy with this home. But um, during that time, I, I had a quilt that I brought with me to and hand quilted the whole thing the whole time. So that was good. I needed my things with me as I was at other people's homes. I was so grateful we could be at other people's homes instead of, um, we had to do a hotel just a few days, not, not too much, but I was so grateful for that, but I needed something of me. So at the time, my mother-in-law lived in Marietta, which was right by Temecula, California, which is right by both. So what is, what did they change the name to quilt shop? So treasured, I think quilt shop. Great. I spent a lot of time there and, um, made a friend there taught her how to hand quilt and that's fun. She's seen my videos and I love that reconnection. Um, that was fun, but also Granny's Attic. Oh my gosh, the best antique mall in the world that I've been to. So I saw something there and I bought it and this was what became my little sewing room. Is that not cool? So as I am doing my prim stuff, these are the things that I keep in mind. I don't know how old this is, but this is the dark, the light. Oh, I love it. And I loved that etching. Now, the sad thing is I have dropped it. Um, as I was moving in here, I had stuff stacked up and I dropped it and it marked this up. My husband fixed it, but there was a light spot here from the raw wood. I just got that Brie Wax and fixed that baby. But this became my little moving sewing room. I bought this there too. So this was my little orc container just like a little cream pour, syrup pour, whatever. So this is this now just sits in my room and I use it sometimes. I have so many different things that I use. This is something that I found when I cleaned out my mom's, um, my mom's sewing room stuff. Anyway, um, so, so I love antiquing. I love all that stuff, but I love the prim. And I love, I was talking to my husband this morning and I said, this was the time that we were still um, place to place to place away from our home. And, um, you know, remember it was Easter. We were, we were not home and um, it was just a year ago. It seems like forever ago now because so much has been happening, but it, that's why I love just being home right now because we actually have a home that we can be in. Okay. Now, for those of you that were asking what kind of fabrics that I like to collect, um, I have, and because I'm a quilter, that's why I have a lot of fabrics. But if you are not a quilter and you just want to have fun fabrics for the back of your smalls, the pillows, I have an idea for you. So if you get a charm pack, so you can go Hobby Lobby, um, what are the other places? Joann's and all that kind of stuff. You can buy fabric less expensive. Um, I make my quilts with what I call quilt quality fabric, which now is getting really, really expensive, uh, 13, 14, 15 dollars a yard. Um, so that that as for a quilt maker, I want to make a quilt that the fabric is a high quality 
and it will last and all that. So for me as a quilt maker, I can I can validate that. Like whatever the word is, where you can say, yeah, like, okay, that worked. I'm going to buy that. So if you're just doing cross-stitching, you're already spending a boatload of money on charts and floss and all that kind of stuff. So the idea for you to have fun fabrics are either to get a charm pack. This was another one of the Lori Holt ones. These are five inch squares, but you're not going to get that big of, um, of a piece of fabric. Where is that what fell down? I had things fall. Let's move these. I don't want these to break. Riley, look at, oh, say hi, Riley. Say hi to everybody. Tomorrow for Easter, he has a bright green, I call him the jelly bean, <laughs> a bright green little jacket that, that he will have on tomorrow morning. So that will be fun. But I bought it because like every, I like, I like brown um, and he's a brown dog. So he had all these dark ones, but up in the mountains in case he got off leash. And one time he did, I had him on a leash talking with my friend in her mountain home, talking with the kids. And I thought Riley was right with me because he was attached to the chair. All of a sudden she sees, she's outside talking to her friend. She sees him because he had a bright blue jacket on. And so she grabbed him and brought him back in because he'd be like, we call him um, a little doggy nugget with all the wild things that we had up there. He would be eaten in a minute. They had, at that time, there was tons of coyotes around. They were nice and big and healthy. So I have a bright, I brought, I bought a bright green um, jacket for him. So that'll be his tomorrow. Okay, so let's, some of these things I'm just not gonna talk about because we don't have time. But where is my, I had a layer cake. Layer cake, where are you? Layer cake. I think that is what fell. Anyway, oh no, here you are, here Betsy. Okay, so a layer cake is a 10 inch square. So you can see, this is another designer that I like. Sometimes hers are more brighter than I want, but this one, I have a collection, so this is 10 inch squares. There's usually about 40 of them, but this one, so you have one or two of each fabric. So if you, it really is good to be able to go into a store and find it and see it because not everything is the same on, um, you know, online. But you can see there's, there's just really three different colors, but this piece, if you were to invest $40 on a collection that you loved, you would have a bunch to do a lot of your smalls. So in the question of what are my favorite designers, um, I, I, you can see a lot of these colors, these are all browns and reds. And I, I put those matching purposely cause I have, um, I have quilts all over the place, but I, my mom's, one of my mom's favorite colors was purple and she has a purple quilt that I just love. And so I wanted, it was a, <laughs> it was a day. And, um, in last recently when we had been in California by so treasured and we were supposed to be up in the mountains, enjoying our cabin before we sell it, but there was too much snow again. <laughs> so who would, who would have thought snow in the mountains? Um, so for whatever reason, I just, my husband, we were doing something together and I said, can we just stop it? So treasured. I just want to run in real quick. And he's like, yeah, sure. So I just ran in and I grabbed this and I got it, but I love these colors. So this is Pam Buddha. Um, Pam Buddha has a lot of fabrics that I really love too. And I don't have a lot of purples. So these are fat quarter bundles, which are eh, uh, 22 by 28, maybe something like that. Don't hold me to that. Um, anyway, fat quarter bundles. And I have a beautiful shelf. When I do my studio tour, you will see. At the moment, I like looking at these. I have a little cool bottle in front of it, but it just gives me pleasure. And that's what so many of you quilters do. You have these collections and they're just so beautiful to look at. And then whoop, you break it open when you see a quilt that you've got to make. Ah. Um, now, here's another one that I bought. This is Pam Buddha as well. I have, I've been on a Pam Buddha kick. Um, this is a current line. Um, I think that one was called the purple one. I think that was Plumberry, and I think you can still get it. Um, I think it came out a year or two ago. This is a new one called Strawberry and Emery. This is a fat. Oh, I can show you the fat, the size of the fat quarter. Anyway, these are what price are these? I, it just depends on how many are in there. But there's one of each of the line of fabric, and I love. I have it laying in my fabric stash area. And this I got from Fat Quarter Shop. And I love just seeing the gradient of colors. 
And I want to, the fun thing about buying collections as a quilter is I can make a small quilt with fat quarter bundles that won't break the bank, but have all these beautiful colors already pre curated or collected for me. So that's, that's those. And then I also, I love, <laughs> I love Joe Morton, Kim Deal. I've been collecting some Janet Nesbitt, but those are getting brighter. And I thought, okay, hold off on those. Just use what you've got. So those are my, some of my fun collections. And then I have so many fabrics. I was looking through my plaids and I want to do something for Easter with this. These are just um, lots of scraps that I got from my mom um, when my sister and I were going through her things, just dividing things up. Oh, this was what I was looking for. So when we were talking about the boxes, I'm using this to use as a reminder of how to make them. I haven't made a needle book um, for two years. So I just recently got back on Instagram and I'm Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher on Instagram. And I had put some pictures on there of how I made this. And I went to look at those and I thought, eh, those aren't very good pictures. So we'll see if I can get some better pictures. Sometimes I'm so focused just on getting it done I don't think about how I can take pictures, but um, anyway, so the it's one of the stitching boxes. So if you want to see how I make these, if you go Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher on Instagram, um, it's one of the boxes and then it has a lot more pictures within that little collection. I had not been on Instagram for two years. I just went to see, can I even get back on it? And um there's so many advertisements now. I was trying to look at who did I used to follow? And anyway, there's there's so many advertisements, just like on Pinterest, and I, I have no patience for advertisements. So I'm like, ah, eh, I don't need that right now. So um, I'm, I'm not doing anything actively on there at the moment. Um, let's see, we don't need to talk about this. What else do we need to talk about? Um, what else do we need to talk about? Oh, I... I will put in the show notes, but Beach Cottage, the lady had a certain amount. So and when I ordered mine, I emailed her and I said, I'm going to be showing this on my video. How many do you have? And so I, apparently she has quite, she has a good supply of them. Um, so, so that would be a place if you want it. If you want it, go get it. But again, if you don't want to spend money, there's so many other creative ways. I was talking to my husband about how I could do this without buying something because even though, anyway, you have to pay extra shipping. And it's like, even though I think it's like $16 and I ended up paying approximately $10 more for shipping, it's like, eh, is that worth it or not? If it is to you, go for it. And if not, figure out what else you can do. Get creative and enjoy the process of creativity. So in my whole idea of not spending a lot of money in April and using what I've got is because I have so many amazing things to work on. Now, um, I, I was watching Christy and she shared that she's doing this two bunny sampler, which I'm sure everybody in the world is, um, on, on floss tube. And so she had shared that she was watching Katie at so tattered floss tube. I hadn't, I had, I had checked out from, from a lot of social media for a long time. Just, we were going through a lot. And I find the more floss tubes I watch, the more things I buy. And then it's this crazy cycle. And so a lot of times I'll be like, I, just, <laughs> I don't wanna see what I can't buy or shouldn't buy. And so anyway, I get in this, this world's weird cycle. Anyway, so I was watching some of Katie's videos and um, wanted to watch from the beginning. So I haven't even seen this one that she was watching this, but I was watching some movies and just stitching. And so because I'm doing stitching in the hoop, it takes a long time, but I was enjoying myself. And they are beautiful colors. And I'm trying not to get hung up on, I used to just want to do um, over dyed floss and not the DMC. DMC is beautiful. So I'm trying not to get stuck in all that. Okay, what's the, so 36 vintage exemplar um, is what this linen is. And that's where I am trying to use what I've got, but it was very similar. I like, if I like, see, it looks very similar. I have no idea what the call for is, but I had this. So it looks similar using the same colors and I'm doing that. Now, 
because I got so many fun new people in my stitching group here watching me, I have a lot of old videos and I think I did them maybe two years. Yeah, I did it two years. And then the whole house sale and blizzard and fixing the cabin and mess, I checked out. But um, I did a video on floss drops and I showed this. This was one I probably showed too. Now, sometimes I don't like the tchotchke things on the end. Sometimes I love them. And they most of them were packed away for a long time. So as I opened it up, it's like, oh, these are so cute. I want to play with them again. So anyway, if you're interested, and I do, it's like this. I talk a lot. And um, so I do tutorials, not tutorials, is what I was calling them. So there is one of those. And I can see, like I said, I can see on the analytics what people are watching right now, especially those of you that just found me the first time and actually want to come back and visit with me, which um, is amazing. Truly, truly amazing. And I love it. Um, it gives me great joy right now. Um, so, and I like putting little things with it. So these were some, I just got a, got a, my box of little thingies out and I liked, and I showed how I did these, I'm assuming. I would hope so if I did a tutorial, not tutorial, I would hope that I would show you how I did it. So, uh, and I have a lot of supplies, so I need to get going on that again. So let's put this away so I don't lose things. Um, as, as I'm trying to figure out what not to share with you and to, to wait till next time, um, the, the thought of not buying things, because I have a bunch of finishes here Let's just like, let's show you the stitching. Um, let me just show you some stitching and because they're, they're finished, not finished. Um, this had a whole story. I'll share the story on it next, but like actually I have been stitching and finishing and um, I actually finished this one at the cabin because I was stitching it at the cabin and it meant a lot to me. So I'll share that story next time. I couldn't even find the book. It's a Blackbird book. 8,000 people have probably shown it to you on your floss tube. So that's one of my finishes. Pineberry Lane, um, Token of Love. I finished this quite a while ago, but I was just using the piece of fabric that I had. Didn't even think about how I was gonna finish it. Well, I'm, I'm not spending the money on having someone finish my work for me right now. So if I did it in this frame, <laughs> it's, it's not quite gonna work. So I wanna play around with it. I wanna do, hey Riley. I want to do something down here with wool, with fabric, with buttons. So that's where I really want to focus. And if I finish this last year, I had it up at, I had just a little tiny space at my cabin. So at Valentine's Day, I just had that laying on the dresser and it was my happy thought. Um, but I want to finish it and make it really fun and cool. This was one that I did this year. So I had not been stitching for a while because we had just gotten back here after a three month stay at the cabin. And um, I started stitching on Christmas Day. And I had seen this on Daisy K's Primitives. I was thinking, um, everything I say is Daisy K's Primitives or Shanda Stitching in Idaho. Um, and it's like, I'm a, I'm a Christy copycat is what I am because Christy does so many awesome prims. So she had shown that she had done this and this is Primitive Betty's. And it was very fun. And I was, I wanted to get it framed and I wanted to see how much it would cost to get it framed. And it's like, um, no, not, not going to happen for me. So I found this and I need to just make it, make it work. Um, so now the one thought is, okay, so I was just stitching, especially when I was, I just got back into cross stitching in 2020 and cause of floss tube. And I just thought I just, chose linens and stuff or called for or what I had and was stitching. So now I'm trying to think if I want it framed, what's the end result going to be? And can I make it with a traditional inexpensive frame or not? So that's, it's like here, am I finally after four years of stitching now, I'm finally thinking of that. Yes. I wanted to share with you too, some ideas. Like when I do, when I do my tour, you'll see, I have a cupboard right in front of me um, or behind you. And I have these drawers. And as I'm working on my table, I want to have things at hand. And so I can just get things done 
and get them organized. So I have this little box and I have the I have these and now I see the benefit of all the 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 floss rings that you have putting a tag on what the project is for and also what linen I'm doing it with. So as I'm sharing or as I'm trying to find a floss, I know where that thing belongs. So um, these are good for those. These are, I get these on Amazon too, inexpensive. Um, and these are just all the little things, all the little things so I can be organized. Um, so I can keep things neat and tidy. Then my other thought on why I want to just have a no spend April, stitch what I have, because I saw something, I saw um, K3N, um, Catherine is what her name is, and she um, she was showing, I just saw a picture of something and I thought, oh my gosh, that's so cool. It was, um, it's a YouTube and it was on me meditation spools or something. And, and I, I, I thought, I saw the picture and I thought, I don't know what meditation has to do with it, but I want to look at those spools. It's just slow stitching. It's being slow thinking and not being in the crazy cycle. And that's where I realized I'm back in the crazy cycle again with getting too many things started, not finished. I'm going to slow down and and s slow stitch. Everything I do is slow stitch because I hand quilt and all that kind of thing. So I will link it down below. It's also on, I have a playlist with lots and lots of fun things that I'm interested in. I have tons of playlists, but it's basically just the idea of having um a spool and I have it was like oh I got these at the thrift store so a fun spool you wrap this around and then you have little bits of fabric that you stitch on and she uses um, her thread wads which is just random threads so sometimes even even with my um, over dyed threads I try to attach them onto what I'm the stitching that I'm doing but sometimes they get lost and then I'll find it on the floor and it's like I don't know what color you are and in my wanting to keep things cleaned up, I'll just throw it away, even though it's like maybe four, four strands of thread, and I'll just throw it away. I don't like throwing things away. So she has a place that she saves those. So that happened the other day. I found something on some stuff on the floor. There you go. I found threads on the floor, and so now they're all going in the drawer, from the floor to the drawer. And these, that's a friend. These are just little bits and pieces as I was going through that that um, scrap box, some of my favorite fabrics. I don't like wasting anything. That was the end of something my mom had given me and I'm, I saved it because I knew I could do it. Even bits of linen that you have. So all these favorite bits of fabric now I'm like, it's another area that I'm stashing stuff because I'm going to do these rolls. So it's on the playlist, but that's the thing. It's like, I really want to do that too. I've got so many things I want to do. Here's the other thing. I had found this this last week. I bought these books on clearance one time. These are old, old books, but anytime on used books, you can find the Needle Love books almost, I would say three quarters are things that I want to do. So I had gone to Hobby Lobby I bought that box. I'm not going to take the time to make that rabbit. I was going to make that box. I bought that box. Um, and I bought, I bought these egg things to do some of the eggs in here. Let's see if I can find it easy. There we go. Yeah. Look at these. I wanted to make those. Um, I've got the wool. I've got the threads. I just didn't have the eggs. So I've got a bag over there with those eggs. So I thought I'm getting all Twitter painted. I'm getting all overstimulated with the things that I want to make. So I thought to slow down, we're just going to do some different things. So maybe I won't be doing any cross stitch for a little while, but hopefully I'll be doing finishes. Oh, I need to open the window because it's getting so warm. Um, maybe I don't know what I'll be doing. I don't know when I'll be back again, but um, for those of you that stay to the end, um, I so appreciate that and I so value this reconnection that I'm doing. And I knew when I got back into floss tube, I needed to be ready to engage with people again. And for a while I wasn't because I have social anxiety 
and um, that's what I don't want to show you my bald spot. Um, I have social anxiety and um, I needed to be ready to engage. So as you guys are commenting, I, I check the comments all the time and it's just like, yes, 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 this is why I need to do it. And then I, I try to catch up on all the comments because I like to comment back to you. But I value that and so many of you stay to the end because you know it's coming. And that means so much to me and that's why I'm doing those. Um, for those of you that stay to the end, this is why I do the videos. There's so many people, uh, there's so many floss tubers out there and they're they're wonderful they're showing they're showing the stuff i'm stitching they're talking they're sharing their life with you and so really why did i need to get back into this um to do this again when i when i have social anxiety and i um anyway i got issues and um did i really need to do this again and this is for you guys. This is for you guys. It's an hour. Um, this is for you guys. This is why I do this. Um, because there, there's, there's many people I'll start to watch too. And I'll start to watch it. And after a few minutes, it's like, it didn't click, didn't connect, whatever. And, um, but those guys, those guys, those, I don't want to cry. That's why I'm talking funny now. Anyway, you guys are the ones that's why I did this again. And I was asking God, um, I got so many things that I need to do in my life and I need to get back to work. And do I have time for this? Is this something that I want to do in my life? Because I'm really trying to be purposeful about what I do. And I thought, well, um, I have my old friends that I wanted to reconnect with and that this is how I do it. Um, and um, it's the devotional. It's that I can share with you the hope that I have in Jesus Christ. Because this world is getting scary. It's getting dark. It's getting depressing. It's getting expensive. It's getting um, a lot of unknown. It's getting toxic. It's a toxic world in a lot of things. And so I thought, what can I do? What can I do about it? Where, where's my place? My place, I want to bring joy and happiness and um, share share. I stitch to hide my crazy. So I know a lot of you guys do too. And um, that's what I wanted to share with you. But really, because there's so many other floss tubes out there, I didn't need to redo this. But I was asking God, what what ministry do you want? Because we're out here in a new community. I have a new church that I love. And what's the ministry? Um, I've been talking to the staff about, I don't know, what do you guys need help with? What do I, what do, what do you, what do you want? And um, I thought, well, I had a voice before to share about my hope in Christ and to encourage other people and to share devotionals. And I thought, let's try it. Let's try it. And so I had not even known because I hadn't even been in my channel. I had totally checked out. And even when I was watching YouTube, it was not through my channel. Um, and so I just thought, okay, we'll see if I can get back in my channel if it's been hacked. Cause I've had a, I had an old Instagram account and it got hacked and I thought, well, if, if God, so our prayer with my friend who was our realtor that helped us sell the house, and that was traumatic, um, cause it was, it was many reasons, but it was a really old house too. But anyway, um, her prayer was that God would open the doors that no man could close and close the doors that no man could open. And we saw that play out miraculously with everything that we did to move. And, um, so that has become my prayer in a lot of things. So it's like, okay, God, open the doors if you want me to do this. And if if you don't, close those doors and and I'll just sit and stitch in my own little room and, and be fine with that. And I got back into my channel. You know, it, it wasn't hard. And I thought, hmm, okay, so. Um, and then I did that first test video um, a month ago, March 3rd. And I thought, okay. People wanted to watch me again. And then I had a lot of amazing new people wanting to watch me. And I thought, hmm, okay, so we'll see what the comments are. Um, and we'll see, let's see what those comments are. It's two years later, a more toxic world. If I talk about God, are people going to absolutely freak out? And if they do, what do I care? Um, you know, um, so it has been, it has been a miracle. Um, with so many people that this is why you guys watch me 
um, because I share about my hope and my faith. And so here we are. Um, I'm doing this for you guys. Um, so last time I shared about a devotional and a lot of you guys went out and bought that or have already had it and you guys read it all the time. So that was neat. This is, this is because I've had the last, the last, I think I did that video maybe a week and a half ago and my brain has just been cycling. We're doing all this paperwork for this huge project and it's like brain numbing. And I got myself in a Bible study, a local women's Bible study at our church, because I am, I'm not disciplined. And I'm, I'm seeing that in my life in many areas. I'm not disciplined, and I'm really working at getting more disciplined. And so a lot of times I can't stop my mind and even to sit down and read the Bible. Is that stupid to me? Yes, that is stupid. But it's what's going on right now in my head, and that's where I know I need to slow down and... Um, eat foods that are no sugar, um, no sugar, no carbs is what I need for my brain. Anyway, short and sweet is what works for me right now. So I had picked this up at a thrift store, um, a year ago when we were displaced. So it's, but it's available right now. And this is, so this is what it is. Jerusalem prayer Um, I think they're $30. I think I spent I got this. Thrift stores are amazing. I got this for six bucks and it was so full. I had to take some out, but I like to have these in different places around the house. And I picked one up the other day and I have, I, then I'll leave it like, this is what I'll do. I'll leave it sitting. So I get to see that first for the day. Um, I, I had it sitting there and I thought, Oh, this will be the perfect one to share with you guys, um, for Easter. And then I was just looking at some other ones. It's like, oh, and that one's perfect. And this one's perfect. So we're going to share three of these. So, um, and this is how, they're just so pretty too. I like how they're pretty. So as I mentioned, as a Christ follower, Easter is not about the Easter bunny. That's uh, the Easter is pagan holiday. Um, really is what church history, I can't even think. But anyway, it's Resurrection Sunday. Oh, and I forgot to share. I have a video that I did years ago about resurrection rolls. That's also why I wanted to do this before Easter. Resurrection rolls are such a fun tradition, whether or not you have little kids or not. But we've we've done those for years and years, and our kids, even as adults, love it. But resurrection rolls, it's an old video. And I meant to talk about that at the beginning, but I forgot, and I don't do the editing. So we'll see. But anyway, this is the verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That is what Easter, Resurrection Day, is all about, that living hope. So that is amazing. And I had, I, it was funny, I was trying to rewatch my old videos to see what I had shared because I didn't write everything down. And I ended up, I couldn't sleep one night, so I was up stitching, and I watched a video that I had done a couple years ago this weekend, and I referenced my pastor. We used to go to Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, and Jack Hibbs, a lot of people now watch him because I used to share about him, um, and I referenced the, I think it was, um, it was the Good Friday service. Um, I think that was the service because it was late at night. So anyway, so I stopped that video and I went to watch it and it was amazing. So, um, so it was amazing. Here's some other videos because my brain, that's where I, I keep feeling my brain is just tired. And, um, so I can't even talk right now. I'm just going to read. I don't need to talk. I need to read these, these words. God's word is live and active. This is what matters, not my talking. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. So that verse, I, I saw that this morning and I thought, oh, that's perfect with where I feel like my brain is just not functioning right now. And in my weakness, he can be strong. I also need to look at what I need to do, which is to stop the sugar and the pizza and the junk that I've been eating. That I can do, but also 
um, I don't need to be super intelligent if God can work through me and speak through me and just help me do the things that he's created me to do. This verse has been huge for me in many, many challenges in my life where I just tell God, I just, I can't, I can't. And then this verse will come to me and it's like, okay, okay, he will be my strength, um, even in my weakness. Okay, here's another favorite. I have so many favorites. Um, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 18.2. So that's just to share some of my favorite things, my favorite verses. Um, and um, I just pray. <laughs> I need to go outside and get cooled off. Um, I pray that you guys would choose joy, nevertheless, that you would celebrate Easter um, for the resurrection of Jesus Christ and that you would feel his love and his presence and his comfort. And um, thank you so much for being a part of this all the way to the end. All right, bye.